لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسب الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير أستغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه وأعوذ به من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد والثناء لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما سيدي ومولاي بقية الله في الأراضين روحي وأرواح العالم له الفداء رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أعظم الله جورنا وجوركم I welcome you all uh, to this gathering it's the based on uh, one of the at least uh, some of the scholars it's the night of the Arba'in the Shab of Arba'in I apologize to I, I see faces in this crowd um, who I know uh, I, I feel ashamed to be here in, in front of them speaking in front of them I know they should be here because I know them personally um, sincere very much more knowledgeable than me so I apologize to all those brothers and uh, welcome everyone else recite us all about please Alhamdulillah, we're blessed to be here in the holy land of Karbala. In, in reality, personally my humble opinion is after the dua that we have, after the poetry that we had, it's, it, it's enough so be, being in a place like Karbala. But unfortunately, um, we're, we're kind of... Um, captive to our traditions, right? So they say speech, we do speech. So inshallah, a few reminders first and foremost for myself and if anyone else can inshallah benefit in this holy city. Surah Mulk, chapter 67, verse 2. He is the one who created life, created death and life. For what? To test which one of you is ahsanu amala. Which one of you is better in their actions. Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us and sends us down in this world, the dunya, this material world, it necessitates that our existence obviously is a part of this this world of this level of existence. We come down to this level of existence. Now the, the goal that he has set for us is for us to be able to, from this lowly world, from this dunya, step by step, elevate our souls so we can reach back to him. So we can go back to where we truly belong. And over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we've created this entire existence, your death, your life, everything, just to see which one of you is better in your actions, meaning which one of you with each action can actually elevate yourselves back to where you belong, back to where you belong. The reason you're here is just because of the material existence necessitates that you're here. Now what that means, what that means is every single day, every single action, ideally, ideally should be taking me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if a person like myself, who alhamdulillah, has been blessed with the opportunity to come to Karbala on Arba'in the past several years, right? And I see myself forget every day, the entire year has gone by. I was here last year, same night, an entire year has gone by. If I feel like I've not made any progress, if I'm still the same old person that I was last year, 
if all these tests liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala to test which one of you is the best of actions and therefore elevate to yourselves every single day or at least every single year if I see myself as someone who, yes, alhamdulillah, I'm coming to Karbala, I'm doing the ziyarah of Abi Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam, but I don't see that progress in my overall, yes, when I come here, alhamdulillah, I get a spiritual high, I enjoy my time, I'm able to shed tears, but when I go back, I'm still where I was. If that is the case, if that is the case, that I have not been able to make progress, then that should be a red flag for me. And not just a little red flag, you know, just, no, a big red flag, a banner. Because this is not just about being a good person or being a bad person. This is, this, the entire creation, entire creation was for this purpose and this purpose only. No matter what I have done in the past year, if I have not made that progress, if I had not improved myself, if I have not been able to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, then it's a waste of my time. I'm missing the entire point of existence. I'm missing the entire reason why I was created, why you were created, why Karbala was created, why Hussein was created, why Hussein's grandfather was created. The only reason they were created, the only reason they were sent, is so me and you, we can elevate ourselves from this lowly world, from this lowly existence, back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, back to where we belong. So if I am one of those people, God forbid, who does not see that progress in my life, then that should be a red flag for me. That should be a wake-up call for me that, hey, Ali, people might think you're a scholar. People might come to listen to you. You might be in the Hawza. There might be some respect. There might be this. There might be that. But don't fool yourself. Don't lose focus of the real purpose. Where in the Quran does it say that the criteria is how many people come to listen to you? Where in, the criteria, where in the Quran does it say that the criteria is if you're a good speaker or not? Where in the criteria does it say if your, uh, your majlis is in a five-star lobby or in a Husseiniyah or on the street or there is no much? Where does it say that that is the criteria? Does Islam not say the exact opposite? That one person, one person you're able to guide. And before that, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Before that, you yourself. So who am I fooling? Who am I fooling by telling myself that I come to Karbala every year? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I have an invitation every year. That's great. But I can't be missing the main purpose, which is for me to be able to make that progress. For me to be able to move in that direction. So that is something that each and every one of us, for ourselves, we need to take an accounting of where we were last year and where we are today. Regardless of if we had the tawfiq to come to Karbala or not. Forget last year. In an ideal world, laysa minna. Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salatu wa salam. Right? Anyone who does not take an account of their actions on a daily basis is not of us. Is not of us. Me and you, we need to be taking account of our actions. Need to be taking our, an account of our progress or lack thereof. Because this is why me and you were created. If we're missing that, we're missing the point of my entire existence. Now, one of the reasons that we're here, right? at least jurisprudentially speaking, one of the reasons that we're here, that everyone comes for Arba'in, 
One of the reasons, right? I don't want to get into the technical um, discussions of it, but one of the reasons that we're here is because of the hadith by Imam al Askari alayhi salatu wa salam. Right? Everyone's heard that hadith, right? Alamatul mu'min khams. Right? That there are five signs of a mu'min. And one of them is the ziyar of Arba'in. Everyone who comes to Arba'in, isn't that somewhere in the back of their head? That isn't that part of the reason at least why this became such a huge, um, such a huge movement? Can anyone quote any other hadith that emphasize, right? Most people have this in mind. So yes, alhamdulillah. Imam al-Askari is saying, listen, there's five signs for a true mu'min. Five signs for a true mu'min. And one of them is the ziyarah of Arba'in. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We not only love our imam, but we follow his words as well. Because we want to be mu'min. And we want to be of the best of the mu'mineen. Alhamdulillah, that's great. But sometimes, a litmus test for ourselves. A litmus test for ourselves. Am I doing this truly because the Imam said that? Am I doing this because my friends come here, I feel good, the walk is a good... F what is the reason behind it? If it truly is because the Imam said, do this, I'm doing this on Arba'in, then how can I ignore the other four things that the Imam has said? Did he say one is more important than the other? Am I, am I, serious, am I serious with myself? Would it not make sense? That if I'm truly a loyal follower of the Imam, I would listen to everything he has to say. Now one of the one of the alamat, one of the signs of the mu'min that he mentions over there is the 51 rakat of salat. Right? Which includes all the wajib prayers, right? Your fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, and isha, and their nawafil. Is that not one of the signs of the mu'min? How many of us even think about that? How many of us give that importance? Right? That's just some food for thought. Let's take out the nawafil. Let's take out the nawafil. How many of us give importance to our salat itself? Other than this hadith, is there not hundreds and thousands of a hadith Enough ahadith that emphasize the importance of the salat. If I truly am someone who's loyal to the imams, who wants to listen to the imams, who wants to be successful in this test of life, should I not be paying attention to that? And if there is a discrepancy, if there is a discrepancy, does that not maybe, at the very least, right? Maybe not hypocrisy, maybe not munafaqat, not. But at the very least, does it highlight my lack of understanding of the religion? Where I'm coming to Arba'in every year, where I'm coming to Karbala every year, Alhamdulillah. But my, all my efforts are focused on that. But my Salat, I don't pay any attention to. Would a person like this would a person like this be able to make that progress? Is that in here or out there? Reset us all, please. I'm sorry, we said another salah, please. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 85. Afatu'minuna bi ba'd Do you just take parts of the book and reject the other parts? 
my words, do you just take parts of the ahadith and reject the other parts? أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So the result of that, the reward of that, for anyone who does that, who takes part of the religion, takes part of the kitab, takes part of the Qur'an, takes part of the hadith, right? just does the things that they want to do and rejects the other things. فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So anyone who does that, the, the, the result of that will be a disgrace in this world. In this world. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ And on the day of judgment, they will face the strictest, the harshest of punishment. Right? It's highlighting, it's highlighting a principle for us that me and you, we cannot pick and choose what we like. If me and you want to be those people who want to be successful in being able to elevate our souls back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can't just be the things that I like to do. It has to be the things, it has to be the principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has highlighted for me. We can't pick and choose what we want. Right? So over here there is an emphasis on salat. And there is nothing more, based on the traditions that we've heard, there's nothing more important out of the actions than this, this salat than me and you sometimes take so lightly. I'm just going to go through a couple traditions. Just going to go through a couple traditions. What we're trying to do over here, what we're trying to do over here is, inshallah, inshallah, highlight the issue if there is one, the if there is a lack of progress, right? We're here in Karbala. We have Hussein right here. We have Abbas right here, alayhi wa salam. This is a chance for me and you to renew our oath with them. If we see there's something lacking, in our life, in our progress, in our, in our understanding of the religion, then this is the place for me and you to renew those understandings, for me and you to renew those oaths, that yes, I truly would like to follow the true religion. Ya Hussein. So if that is an issue, since we're here, we're trying to highlight some points that we can inshallah start working on throughout this year. So if we come next year or whenever we're given the tawfiq to come, we remember that there was an oath that I made to my master. And inshallah that gives me the, the incentive, even if it's just one action at a time, to actually improve myself tangibly to see that progress in my life rather than just my religion being so haphazard. Karbala, Karbala. Majlis, Majlis. You know, uh, a procession, let's go to the procession. Let's do this, let's do that all over the place. Alhamdulillah, there's barakat in that. There's no doubt about it. But if we understand and make this progress a little more systematic, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that we will be able to, inshallah, improve, and we will see those signs. Allama Qadi, rahmatullah alayhi, Sayyid Qadi, remember the people who went to Wadi al Salam? They went to go visit his grave. He's, what, he's such a personality that he's the teacher of Ayatollah Bahjat, rahmatullah alayhi, and Allama Taba Tabai, Sahib al Mizan teacher of these two personalities enough said he quotes quote from him he told his students that if there is anyone who prays their salat at the earliest time gives their salat importance and they're not able to reach the highest of levels the highest of levels then they can do they can curse me they can do la'an on me The, 
Doesn't that highlight an issue? That this salat that's there for me five times a day, three times a day, whatever school of thought you're from, it's there for me on a daily basis. Yet I don't give that importance. But other things, sometimes it's in my salat. It's in my salat that I'm thinking about how can I get closer to Allah? How can I do this? How can I make that mosque? How can I make my center better? How can I do this for the community? How can I help the community? How can I help the family? Wait, you're missing the point. The salat was an opportunity, a means for you to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in and of itself. Why am I wasting this opportunity and thinking about other opportunities? It's, it's not something, it's not rocket science. And I do not intend on, on discussing some philo philosophical terminologies with you, brothers and sisters. First of all, because I don't know them. Second of all, because I don't think that, it w that, that, that is what it's all about. It's simple building blocks. The highest of the levels of teachers, when you go ask them, what do I do? They tell you just this good old wajib and good old haram that you know. So why am I not getting that? Why am I not creating a plan for myself to be able to improve on those? Verse of the Quran, inna salat tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. It's this old salat that will help you stop from all wrongdoing. That will become a barrier. Verse, explicit verse of the Quran. It will become a barrier between you and every wrongdoing. Allah Tabatabai in his tafsir al-Mizan says that this, this good old salat that we so carelessly deal with. He says this good old salat. He says that every single one of us, right, we're always looking for that advice, right? If we've seen just Malanas come to our cities, we're always looking for the You know, Malana, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I improve spiritual advice? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. People who are maybe um, in touch with, you know, they're in the Hawza, they're even, the brothers are here, right? You ask them, they're always looking for that spiritual teacher, the person who can take their hand and take them to the highest of the levels right isn't that what everyone is here for so hussein can take us from our from our levels and take us to the highest of the levels isn't that why everyone is here to be able to improve ourselves allah says if you were able to find that most perfect teacher assume sayyid qazi right Assume you're one of those people who can go to his grave and you can hear what he has to say. The perfect teacher. For example, Mathana. Allah Tabai says, if you're able to find that perfect teacher and he agrees to do your tarbiyah, he agrees to train you, this teacher will not be able to give you any more than what this salat can give you. This teacher cannot give you any more than what this salat gives you. Let, let me make sure this is not misunderstood. I'm not saying the teachers are not important. The teachers are very important. What I'm highlighting over here is the importance of the salat. That, you, that we already know one thing that's in our hands. But we're not taking care of that. We just want to move to the next level and the next fancy thing and tell me about philosophy and tell me about the haraka johariya and tell me about the different levels of existence and tell me about this and tell me about that. Brother, the Quran is saying, Inna salatan anil fahsha iwal munkar. Why are we not giving that enough importance? This is something that is worth thinking about for me and you, especially the people who come with the intention to be able to make that progress, to be able to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people who understand amala, that it's for, to test each and every one of you, which one of you is going to be better in your actions. And this, based on the Quran, 
on the traditions, on the advice of the scholars, is one of those things that will help me the most, more than anything else. So why do I not give it importance? Is it truly because I never heard of this, that this Salat can do this for me? Is it because I pick and choose my religion? Is it because I only like doing things the way I've always seen them? And I'm not willing to, to, to budge from that? What is the reason behind that? That's something that me and you, we need to figure out for ourselves. So inshallah, we can start moving in the right direction. So inshallah, we can see the progress. We can feel the progress. We can feel the progress. I truly, truly believe, brothers and sisters, if a person like Allama Qazi is saying that just one thing, just try to pray at the earliest time, I have full belief in that you will be able to feel that difference. Maybe not in the first day, maybe not in the first week, maybe not in the first year, maybe not in the first five years. But who said, who said that if you start praying, just one out of all those wajibats, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send His angels down upon you. You will start dreaming about the Imams and the Prophets and your, your eyes will be open to the Barzakh. We're not living a fairy tale, brothers and sisters. We're not living a fairy tale. But the truth is, if it's an explicit verse of the Qur'an that this will help you, then you will, if not sooner, Maybe later, but you will taste that sweetness. Ilahi, man dhalladhi dhaqa halawata mahabbatik farama min kabadala. Who can it be who's tasted the sweetness of your love and then opted for something else? Why is this sweetness of my love limited to when I just come to Karbala? Why is this sweetness of the love limited to when I go to the haram? Why is this sweetness of the love limited to until someone comes and reads musibah for me or comes and gives me reminders? It's only that then that my heart starts shining and I start feeling that love. Are, are Imams not the people who felt like that in every single Salat that they prayed? Have we not heard about those stories? Why are we not putting enough emphasis on those things? I just want to quote a couple of hadith for you brothers, sisters, brothers and sisters with regards to the reality of when you or any one of us stands up to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens? What happens? Right? We've heard, we've heard about all those traditions that, especially Thursday night, all the Anbiya and the Mursaleen, they come to Karbala. We've heard about the stories that from 61 Hijri till today, until the end of time, there will be this, this group of angels that keeps circulating the Haram of Imam Al-Hussein. We've heard all these stories, right? Let me read the hadith for you after us. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Read another salat, please. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا قام العبد المؤمن في صلاته If a mu'min stands up for his prayers نظر الله إليه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks down upon him looks down upon him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you his attention. You, that individual, that individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nadara ilayhi, hatta yansarif, until he um, leaves the prayer. Uh, I'll just do the translation to be able to get through it quickly. And these clouds of mercy, 
clouds of mercy come over this person. And this mercy is raised from on top of his head till the ends of the sky. Till the ends of the sky. Right? Just like this, this is not fictional. Just like we know that they're angels on the haram of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Salamu alayhi. Just like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me and you, when you stand up to pray, there's a cloud of mercy where such as the, this mercy extends from the top of your head till the extent of the skies. And the malaika. And the malaika go around him, go around him till the extent of the sky as well. So there's mercy and there's malaika that are going around him. Wakkalallahu bihi malakan, and Allah subhanahu wa taala appoints an angel for him. Qa'iman ala ra'sihi yaqulu lahu ayyuh al musalli, an angel that stands at his head and tells him. Oh, the one who's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you only knew, if you only knew what's in this salat, you would never leave this salat. You would never leave the state of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single time me and you stand up, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every single time that you stand up to pray to me, I look down upon you as if you were the only creation that I had created. You were the only thing that existed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen, looks down upon me and you as if me and you were the only existence. And he then says, that, but this abd of mine, this abd of mine, thinks about all of creation except me except me why are we going through these ahadith these ahadith based on advice are ahadith that every time that we stand up to pray if we take a few minutes it won't even take a few minutes 10 seconds just recollect ourselves if we just think about these two ahadith that this is the reality of the salat that I'm standing up for. This is what I am, this is who I'm standing up in front of. I assure you, because I have complete faith in the advice that I got, assure you that it will help in the concentration, it will help in improving our salat, it will help, and so on and so forth. Salat will not be a chore for us anymore. It won't be something that we just need to check off of our to-do list. Because if me and you are serious about this, brothers and sisters, there's no shortcut to it. There's no shortcut to it. Yes, Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam can help us get there. But the way that the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works is me and you, through our own free will, need to make the right decisions. Yes, Hussein can give us the tawfiq to be able to do the right things so we can make the right decisions. But it has to be through our free will that we make these right decisions, that we try to improve ourselves so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other way. There is no other way. We're fooling ourselves if we think we can just go to Karbala every year and this will make me into this perfect human being. It, we can look through our own experiences. Now, don't, don't doubt the rewards that you get while you're in Karbala. Yes, all the sins will be erased. Yes, the, the rewards of I don't know how many hajj, of how many umrahs, they will be there. But as we said in our last discussion, that will not take care of the root 
cause of why me and you, and some of us at least, are not able to make that progress. One thing at a time, if we can improve on. If, and if there's one thing that me and you want to work on, there's nothing more important than this good old salat. This good old salat. A person, recite a salat, please. A person came up to Imam al-Sadr alayhi salatu wasalam and asked, Yabna Rasulullah, what is, what can I do? What is the best thing that I can do to get closer to you? To get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam al-Sadr alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, La a'lamu shay'an ba'd al-ma'rifa min hadhihi salat There's nothing better, nothing better after ma'rifa, after the knowledge, after the knowledge, then this salat, this good old salat, hadhi salat, the one we just prayed over here. Nothing better than it. Nothing better than it. Why am I taking it so lightly? Why am I taking it so lightly? And we're not talk, even talking about the nawafil yet. We're just talking about the wajibat. When we start talking about the nawaf, there's a hadith they're talking about. If you start praying the nawafil, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become for you the eyes that you can see through, the ears that you can hear through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will become, we have the potential to be become the perfect manifestations of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this salat, through these nawafil. إِنَّ الْوُصُولَ إِلَى اللَّهِ سَفَرٌ لَا يُدْرَكْ إِلَّا بِإِمْتِطَاءِ اللَّيْلِ إمام العسكري سلام الله عليه اللهم صلى الله على محمد وعلى محمد that indeed وصول to get to Allah سبحانه وتعالى remember where we started off step by step from this lowly world from this lowly existence to be able to elevate ourselves to the highest level. Imam al-Askari alayhi salatu wa salam saying, al-wusul ila Allah, that this journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a suffer. It's a journey. La yudrak. And this journey cannot be achieved illa bi imtita illay, except through benefiting from the night. Meaning from the night prayer. Meaning from the nawafil. Meaning from the time before fajr. Right? So this is extra credit for all those, alhamdulillah, you know, mukhlis brothers and sisters who already have the wajibat down. But there's so much potential. So much potential. It's, it's, it's a wake-up call for me and you to be able to see, do I understand my religion correctly? Or am I just following a path without thinking about it. The people say do this, the center says do this, the world says do this, and I start doing it. Anyone who does anything without insight, without knowledge, without basira, they're like a traveler who's fallen off the path. Borda. The faster they move along this path, it will not do anything for them except take them away from the intended destination. So if me and you, God forbid, God forbid, even after going to Karbala every year, even after attending the Majalis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein every year, 10, 10 days a year, 10 days a year, two and a half months, this, that, all of that. If after all of that, we see ourselves further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or at least not any closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps that's a red flag based on this hadith. Maybe, God forbid, I'm one of those people who's al-amilu ala ghayri basiratin, that I'm moving, I'm chugging along, but I don't know where I'm going. I haven't spent enough time trying to understand the larger picture. I'm just chugging along, just chugging along, thinking that, yes, this is the right path. Never thought about it. 
Never thought about intricate detail. It's not like I don't have the capacity to think about it. Because at work, at school, at this, at that, at debates, this, that, everything, I can hash it out. I have the details down. Everything to the intricate details. But when it comes to this, just a very general, vague understanding. Yes, Hussein is good for me to be able to reach the ultimate goal. But what has Hussein said? What was the message of Hussein in Karbala? What was the message of Hussein in Ashura? Do I understand that message? One. Am I one of those people who stands up for that message? Two. Am I someone who's, who has the ability to be a leader, to be the Alamdad, to be the Abbas of today? Three. Can I be the Alamdar? Can I be the standard bearer? If I don't understand what direction to move in. It looks really pretty, right? When we say, Ya Zainab, Kulluna Abbas, right? We're all your Abbas. It looks really pretty. The bands look really nice on the arms. Very good. Very nice. Alhamdulillah. But talk is cheap, brothers and sisters. Am I, have I understood the message of Ashura. Innama kharajtu li talab al-islah fi ummati jaddi. Islah in the ummah. Am I working towards islah in the ummah? Is my community working towards islah in the ummah? Is my family working towards islah in the ummah? Can I do islah of the ummah without doing islah of myself? Who am I kidding? I want to be the savior of the West. I want to be the savior of UK. I want to be the savior of the US. I w Bro, what are you talking about? Just one line from Hussein. Have we thought about it? All I want to do is islah. Even the youngest of the kid in this gathering can tell you, listen, if you don't have something, you can't give it to anyone. How can I give a community, a fam, forget a community, my own family islah, if I've never thought about my own nafs, if I've never worked on myself, if I've never thought about the message of Hussein, if I've never thought about how do I incorporate that message in my life, and I'm just caught up with going to the majlis, coming back, making sure my majlis is big, making sure this, making sure that, making sure most people come here, what are we going to get for the food, how good should the banners be, what should the setup be like, what should the lighting be like. It's okay if you want to do that. But not by compromising the message of Hussein. Will we be able to stand up on the day of judgment, look Hussein in the eyes, and tell him, Yes, I was a standard bearer of your message? Because we held the majalis. Is that good enough? Is that good enough? Is that the worth of Imam Hussein's blood that was shed in this land? Forget all that blood. <laughs> Is it worth even one of those people? What I'm doing for Hussein, is this service worth it, what was their sacrifice worth my understanding? The efforts that I'm putting in. <laughs> Abbas, just a few steps from here, gave, him, gave his hands away. Just a few steps from here. Right? Sometimes we get caught up in this, all this lighting and the Bain al-Haramain and the, and the gold domes and all of that's beautiful. But what's inside there is so much more beautiful than all, than all of this. 
Why do my eyes only see the gold dome? Why do I not see Hussein? Why do I not understand the message of Hussein? Was Asghar's blood not worth it? Six month old baby, six month. Pierced with an arrow so me and you can wake up from this slumber. We talk about it. But we don't do anything about it. Was Akbar's body being cut into pieces not worth it? What is it going to take for me to wake up from my sleep?